For many, basketball was a way out of a dangerous and poverty-stricken environment. And before some stars made it into the league, they were faced with serious adversity they had to overcome, including ties to gang culture. The former MVP has always been known for his sensational performances day in and day out, mostly known for his coveted step back three. Hart has been lighting up the scoreboard for years. Now, a lot of people don't remember this, but just a few years back, Harden was seen throwing up gang signs during an NBA game. Years back, when James Harden was playing against the San Antonio Spurs, Harden was running up and down the court, throwing up hand signs that uh, made a lot of people think he was claiming to be a blood. During the early part of his career, James Harden grew up and played basketball in Lakewood, California. The Bloods were founded in the early 1960s, located in Los Angeles, California. The Bloods are infamously known for trying to recruit young African Americans to the gang whenever they get a chance. The street gang was known for making a prime on the streets and making money by whatever means necessary, from selling guns to drugs. Blood members identified themselves through various gang indicators such as colors, clothing, symbols, tattoos, jewelry, graffiti, language, and hand signs. Now James Harden has befriended various rappers that have ties associated with the Bloods. The most well known would be Lil Wayne. James Harden would send out a tweet that said, come to the next game, we got seats for you five. Apparently, the most commonly used blood symbol includes the number five, the five-pointed star, and the five-pointed crown. These symbols are meant to show the Bloods affiliation with the People's Nation, a large coalition of affiliates created to protect alliance members within the federal and state prison system. Systems. These symbols may have been seen in tattoos, jewelry, and clothing that gang members wear, as well as in gang graffiti, which is used by the Bloods to mark territory. Now, a couple of rappers would go on to criticize Harden for the gang behavior. Slim Thug and Lil Duvall would give their opinion on the situation, saying, he's not about that life. And as of now, James Harden isn't thought to have any serious connection to any gang, but let's hope this doesn't cause any problems in the future. DeMar DeRozan has been getting used to his new NBA team these past couple of seasons, but the Spurs knew they added a franchise player. DeMar DeRozan plays with raw emotion and passion every time he's out there on the court. He's had to overcome obstacles and bad habits early in his life, but thanks to determination, hard work, discipline, talent, and of course a bit of luck, DeMar DeRozan went from the streets of California to an NBA superstar. DeMar won't ever forget where he came from. That's why at the start of his NBA career, DeRozan would throw up gang signs, showing he was affiliated with the Crips. Born and raised in Compton, California, DeRozan had to overcome one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the entire United States. Compton was known for its roots, bringing up hip-hop, but has some of the worst gangs and criminal activities ever. Basketball is what saved DeMar DeRozan. At an early age, DeMar was already an impressive young talent with his ability to attack the rim, quickly becoming one of the most desired assets in California basketball, ranked top five in the nation while attending Compton High School. DeRozan grew up in a hostile environment, with several members of his family shot dead in the proximities of his own house. Although, it was his known talent that made all the thugs in the neighborhood protect the talented athlete and his remaining family members, constantly cheering and encouraging him to get better and better, and DeMar became the ultimate pride of Compton. Back in 2010, DeMar DeRozan went to Twitter and tweeted out, Hashtag in high school, I wore blue every day. The Crips are a gang based in the coastal regions of Southern California. They were founded in Los Angeles, California in 1969, and its members traditionally wear blue. The Crips are one of the largest and most violent associations of street gangs in the United States, with an estimated 30,000 to 35,000 members in 2008. They've been involved in murders, robberies, and drug dealing, among other crimes. The Crips would have to have strength in numbers, because just around the block was the other gang they hated, which happened to be the Bloods. The biggest obstacle DeMar had to overcome was when his best friend was shot and killed during a dice game at the age of 17. While DeRozan's managed to stay away from the life of crime, the guard has never shied away from representing his past and throwing up his fair share of signs. During an interview with ESPN, DeMar DeRozan's past was brought up, and he responded by saying, People ask me what I would have done if it wasn't for basketball. I can never give a good story because, honestly, I don't know. I had no other options. Paul Pierce has been retired for a few years, but when looking back, he always played with crazy intensity and always strived to win. Now, early in his career, Pierce had some gang-related issues that cost him major fines and almost his life. Pierce was born and raised in Oakland, California. His family later moved to Inglewood, California, where he attended Inglewood High School. California was known for two of the most violent gangs. During his NBA career, Pierce would flash blood gang signs. On November 25th, 2000, Pierce was stabbed 11 times in the face, neck, and back, and a bottle smashed over his head while at the Buzz Club, a nightclub in Boston Theater District. He had to undergo lung surgery to repair the damage. Witnesses say that Pierce was attempting to separate fighters when he was stabbed. Tony Batiste, Pierce's teammate at the time, along with Batiste's brother, saved him by rushing him to a nearby hospital. Apparently, alleged gang member stabbed Paul Pierce, but after almost losing his life, Pierce would play all 82 games the following season. Paul Pierce would eventually talk about the situation, and per ESPN, he'd go on to say, I stabbed 11 times. I felt like I was trapped in a box. I couldn't go nowhere. I battled the pressure for a year. 
The only thing that saved me was basketball. Weeks after the stabbing took place, Pierce was still getting death threats and even went on to say, so now I'm really paranoid. I don't want to go anywhere. The police sat in front of my house for months. I was a mess. I think that's the reason I got back on the court so fast. Me sitting at home thinking about the stabbing didn't work. I went to every practice, sat on the sideline for hours because that's where I felt safe. I didn't want those practices to end because now to go back out there in this world that really scared me. Now, eight years later, when the Celtics were making their NBA championship run, Pierce would look upset with Al Horford at the time, flashed him a gang sign. The commissioner was upset and the NBA fined Pierce $25,000 for the gang affiliated sign. Al Horford would talk to reporters after the game and he'd say, I don't know anything about the gesture. I don't know what that is. Nowadays, Paul Pierce strives to stop the gang violence while helping the inner city youth whenever he gets a chance. Steven Jackson played for nine different NBA teams during his NBA career. Jackson was mostly known for his performance during the 2003 NBA season, where he won his only NBA championship with the San Antonio Spurs. Retirement has been good to Jackson, but before achieving the NBA, Steven was growing up around gangs. Jackson's one of the few athletes who openly admit to having gang ties and has been involved since he was just nine years old. Fights, drugs, and death were part of growing up in his neighborhood. It definitely made an impact on his life. He lost his brother when he was just 15 years old because he was beaten to death. Jackson openly admits to being associated with the Bloods and wears red on a regular basis because he claims it's just a part of who he is and his upbringing. But back in 2005, Steven Jackson was playing for the Indiana Pacers and he had an accident with some Detroit fans. Apparently, it was because of all the red that he wore. Jackson would go on to say in an interview, I was just raised like that. All my friends, I don't trip on nobody with no blue rag, but at the same time, it's what I represent. It's what I represented since I was nine years old. All my friends in my neighborhood, it was just inherited. I ain't banging though. Although he admits to being affiliated, he also made it very clear that he's not involved in the game. Even though Ellis never won an NBA championship, he'd win the Most Approved Player Award, showing everyone why he belonged in the NBA. Ellis was always trying to bring his A game whenever he played, but towards the end of his career, fans were focused on his gameplay. They were focused on his tattoos. Monte Ellis had a bunch of ink throughout his bottom. The only problem was, some of his ink would show Ellis had gang ties. Ellis was born in Jackson, Mississippi, an area with high gang activity. The Mississippi native sports several tattoos, one of which displays the letters GD, which is believed to represent the gangster's Disciples, a Mississippi gang. The Gangster Disciples are a criminal street gang which formed at the south side of Chicago in the late 1960s, but eventually would branch out nationwide, making its way to Mississippi. The predominant symbol of this criminal gang is a six-pointed star of David. Monte Ellis also has a tattoo of a six-pointed star, a shape which is also used by the gang and is similar to the star of David. There's a lot of speculation out there regarding the shooting guard's ink. However, he never commented on him. Javaris Crittenton is an unknown former NBA player that only lasted in the league for three seasons. He played a couple seasons starting with the Lakers and ended his career the next year with the Wizards. It's reported that after joining the Lakers, Javaris decided to join the Mansfield Gangster Crips for some reason, and he's gone downhill ever since. Javaris joined the Wizards in 2008, but his gangster mentality stuck with him throughout the conference switch, and Javaris was cut from the team after pulling a loaded gun on a teammate, Gilbert Arenas, in the locker room. He was arrested and handed a year probation for the incident, and never played in the NBA again. Gilbert Arenas remember that day and he went on to say in an interview the plane lands and now Javar says to JaVale so you're just gonna let me lose my money like that you ain't gonna be real and give me a chance to get my money back Arenas would respond by saying Javaris I'll burn your car while you're in it then we'll find an extinguisher to help you out and he says well, I'll just shoot you then I said man I'll bring you the gun to shoot me two days later on December 21st 2009 the locker room confrontation took place, and Arenas would actually bring four unloaded guns and would tell Crittenton, hey, come pick one. Javaris responded by pulling his own gun, one which Arenas said was loaded. Arenas pleaded guilty to a single felony count of possession of a gun without a license, and he was sentenced to 30 days in a halfway house and served two years of supervised probation. The trouble with the law wouldn't stop there, because currently, Javaris is now serving a 23-year sentence in prison for shooting and killing a 22-year-old woman who's a mother of four. This killing of the young woman was not intentional though, and he apparently missed his intended target. What a lot of people don't know was the fact that before Randolph was ever drafted into the NBA, he was arrested for robbery and battery charges. His behavior at a young age was unlike most teenagers. That mentality is what led him into a gang. Randolph's mother, Mae Randolph, struggled all of her life, raising four children without a father figure in their life. Living on welfare, struggling to pay bills, and not being able to get the children new clothes was normal for Zach growing up. Randolph wore the same pair of jeans to school day after day, week after week. Kids called him crusty. Embarrassed and upset, one day he walked into a Walmart, grabbed a new pair of jeans, and tried to walk out the door without paying. Randolph was caught and spent 30 days in a juvenile detention. And that was the start of a familiar pattern. Years passed and infractions piled up, but Randolph's basketball talent blossomed. Authorities placed a 15-year-old Randolph under house arrest for battery. He was placed in juvenile detention two years later for receiving stolen guns. In 2002, he was arrested for underage drinking, less than a year after being drafted into the NBA by Portland. And the problems trailed him there. Randolph earned fame and obviously investment in the street gang known as Hoop Family. 
a gang that was based out of Portland, who family associated with the Crips, who've been investigated for murder, firearms, and narcotics distribution. At one point, they reportedly put a price out on the head of former NBA player Sebastian Telefair, who was subsequently found with an assault rifle during a search of his premises. Sebastian said that he appropriated possession of the weapon as a means of protecting himself from said gang. Back in his rookie days, Melo was known for throwing up gang signs, but he hasn't been involved in a gang. Carmelo Anthony grew up in Baltimore, surrounded by gangs, drugs, and violence. Like most of us, he's had friends from when he was growing up. Anthony was featured in a DVD years ago called Stop Snitching, which is part of a campaign going on in Maryland at the time to convince people to stop providing information to police when it comes to gang crime. At the time, Carmelo was young and dumb, and he claimed he'd had no idea he would be in a DVD, but regardless, that's not something you want to show the youth in an inner city. After the campaign took a new level and some tapes were released, we were able to see Carmelo Anthony appear in some of these videos, hanging out with some of the most famous gang members at that time. Gangs, violence, and drugs just don't have a place in professional sports. Hey yo dog, what are you doing bro? You need to click on this video on the screen dude! Seriously man, this video on the screen is, is like a marshmallow being roasted, you know what I mean? It's, not, it's, it's fire, that's, that's what I'm trying to say, okay? Just click on it.